Hello and welcome, Bill Sklodowski here with another edition of iPhone Friday. Every Friday at this time, we're here to help you make your high-tech life easier with a little lesson on how to get the most out of your smartphone, your iPhone, or your iPad, because they're basically the same thing, one's just bigger, right? So, as you know, we've been doing our iPhone A to Z series, going through each letter of the alphabet, and this week I got to iPhone G, and the biggest thing that came to my mind wasn't really specific to the iPhone. Of course, when you think G, big G, what is that? That's Google, right? At least it is for me and probably a lot of other folks. So I would like to spend the next few minutes touching on what I think are th two or three, three really, of the best, most helpful apps that Google puts out for your iPhone. Now, if you know the smartphone world, there's Apple, you know, maker of iPhone, iPad, and all those other, you know, Mac uh, computers and all that stuff. And then there's kind of everybody else, and it's kind of all heaped into that Android world. Uh, and really, the Android software is made, or at least it was started by Google, and then they kind of gave it away. There's a whole corporate history there that we don't really need to have to cover. But people think, well, gee, Google and iPhone, do they even, do they even talk to each other? And the answer is yes, and they do it really well. Uh, because Google or whoever has written the Google apps has taken the time to really integrate them with the Apple and the iPhone ecosystem. So with that in mind, uh, you know, because I do have in class, when I teach the class, a lot of people will say, well, it's an iPhone. Can I use, can I do a Google search on my iPhone? Because the iPhone is Apple. It's not, and the answer is yes. So with that in mind, I wanted to touch on three apps, like I said, and, and Google search is one of them. Google Assistant is the other one. It's very much like Apple's Siri, and you can have both on the phone at the same time or on your iPad. And the other one is Google Photos. And we've talked about it a little bit in the past, and I just want to touch on it again in case you are unfamiliar with it or you might have missed the previous video. So I know it's a lot, right? It's just a mouthful. But with that in mind, let's uh, dig ourselves into the phone here and talk about Google Apps. Now, for me... I have, let's, by the way, I noticed this last week. Somebody pointed this out to me. They're like, Bill, it's like you're doing iPhone Friday. It's a little bit after 8 o'clock. 9.41 a.m. And I looked at my, and it's on my phone too, by the way, at 9.41 a.m. And I have no idea. It's certainly not 9.41 a.m. Nowhere in the world is it 9.41. Well, it might be. Somewhere in the world is 9.41 a.m. But I don't know how that happens. <laughs> I, I just, I don't. And look, the clock is different. I mean, the, 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 the real life clock face there, and then the time up, they're different. I have no idea what's going on there, and, and that's a whole other thing for a whole other day. But on my phone, I have a whole folder, and you can see it over there on the far right, just above the App Store, a whole folder full of Google Apps. And I'll tap on that and show you that I have uh, Google Home, uh, a Google Assistant, Google Maps, the cal uh, calculator, Google Drive, and Google Photos, okay? So all of those are for free over in the App Store. And if you've have been to the App Store, you know, you know that you can just tap on the search button down on the bottom there and then tap into the search box and just start typing all the different Google apps. And there, you know, Google Drive, Google Meet, Maps, LLC, Photos, and it just keeps going, Docs, Home, Slide, there's just tons of them, right? So if you don't have any of these apps, now you know how to download them and get them on your phone, right? And they're free. That's another beautiful thing about Google. They're all free. So just feel free to download them. And if you don't like them, you can delete them. All right, let's uh, start off just talking about the regular Google search, right? So if you wanted to, you know, and I'm just going to do a search for it. Well, actually, I already did. See where the big G there with the Google? If remember... This was one of our lessons a long time ago. If you don't know where the app is, or if you don't, you've got two choices. You can have Siri open it for you, or you can just put your finger right on the phone and pull down, and it will open up the search box there that you see at the top. And if I start typing in Google, all right, there's all the Google things that come up. And the big G, Google is the first one for the search there. And there you go. This is the regular Google search. So like if you go on your computer, www.google.com, this is where you would end up, right? The Google, oh, I turned my phone sideways. Oh, turn the phone sideways, turn the phone sideways. Look at that. 
uh, this is where you'll end up. And you could just type in anything you want in the search box up there, and you'll see the little microphone as well. If you'd rather speak it, you could talk to Google, and it will listen to you, and it will do searches for just about anything. You know, if I wanted to, you know, tap on that the microphone. Disney World Vacations. Thinking good thoughts there that we'll someday be able to go on vacations. So there you go. And there's all your Google results just like anything else, right? Simple, simple. And then you can tap and go back and forth and do any of them, right? Now, that's basic and that's simple and it's easy. And, you know, a lot of people do that sort of thing. But you can do that with almost anything, right? You can ask Siri about something. You can go to a website or a search or whatever. So Google on your phone, not quite as, you're not going to use it as much on your phone as you are sitting in front of the computer. Because if you're at the computer at your desk, maybe you're doing research or you're, you know, writing the great American novel or doing whatever you're doing and you need to get something specific, you know, you need to find a website or whatever. Okay, cool. I get it. So, but when you're on your phone, chances are you're traveling. I mean, you're out of the house. You're in the car. You want to find the nearest gas station or the nearest, you know, pizza shop or whatever. And, you know, you could do it with Google. You can do it with Siri. And here's the other one, the other app I want to mention, which is Google Assistant. Okay. Now, with that one, let me just go over to my little Google folder here. The Google Assistant is the one you see down there, second row down, first on the left. It's got like just three or four dots of color on it. And when you open it up, it looks a lot like Google. Oh, it's listening to us. Let's turn that off for the moment. Um, <laughs> in that, it has a lot of different search things. Like you can see, hi, how can I help? Here's some things you can ask, right? Oh, show me Hell 9000 videos. I like that. Um, computers taking over the world. And all kinds of other questions. So if you just have basic stuff that you need to ask or you want basic information, this is a great way to do it. The Google Assistant is also very much like Siri in that you can do things like set timers and reminders and add things to a grocery list and all kinds of stuff like that. But again, for most of us, when we're going to be out traveling or driving or whatever, all right, if... And, and I... Let me rewind just a little bit. Like I've said, Siri has a lot of this stuff as well, but sometimes, for reasons I don't understand, sometimes one or the other, Siri or Google, will just have better information. Or one won't quite understand the question that I'm asking, or won't quite figure out what I'm looking for. So I'll usually... Yeah, usually <laughs> start with Siri. And if I don't get a good answer or if it's like that doesn't look right or whatever, I'll come over to the Google Assistant and also ask the same question. So as we've done in the past with Siri, you can ask all kinds of like, you know, the nearest, like I said, nearest gas station, nearest donut shop, near, what's the weather, what, all, the, all the questions you could think of to ask Siri, you can also ask the Google Assistant, okay? And again, does it matter? Nah, not really. Uh, some people, you know, like the Google stuff versus the Siri stuff, whatever. Um, for example, I don't know. Let's try the pizza thing, all right? All I'm going to do is I'm going to tap, you can see down to the bottom there, <laughs> the, the microphone. And I'm going to tap on the microphone and then ask it my question. And I'm going to say, pizza shop near me. I found a few and you can see that near it, you typed out the question, and then using the Google resources now, here's all the, you know, if you have, if you would have done, I found a few pizzerias near you. If you would have typed this into Google, this is exactly the same results that you would have gotten. And then you can tap on more places, and it opens up the regular Google page, and there they are, all the, good, oh, now I'm getting hungry. All right, so that's one thing that you can do with the Google Assistant. Now there's a lot more, right? And if you want to, if you're just curious or if you'd like to try it, you can always just, uh, here's something I did before I started the video. I said, what can the Google Assistant do for me? Here are a couple of suggestions. News. You can say things like, help, tell me cryptocurrency find the weather, news, navigate things, or call people, or do a set of reminder, games, Swipe answers, to see messages, more music, all kinds of things. Some of these things Siri can do, some it cannot. So 
you could set alarm. Now, the alarm thing, everybody says, well, Bill, you, I can set an alarm or I can set a timer with Siri when I'm in the kitchen. Sure you can. One of them. I can set one timer or one alarm. If i am got two pots boiling, <laughs> a watch pot never boils. If i got two things going, i got one thing in the oven, i got one pot that needs 10 minutes, and i got one thing in the oven that needs 15 minutes, try and do that with Siri. Yeah, you can't. It'll do one at a time. But if I came in here and I set one alarm with the Google Assistant for 20 minutes and one alarm on Siri for 15 minutes, now I have two different alarms that are going. Oh, that's interesting. So that's for timers, fun, home control, conversions, nutrition, nearby play, just tons and tons and tons and tons of things. And again, most of these are the same things you'll get in Siri. It's just another source of information. I guess that's the best way to put it. Just mostly, uh, just different sources. You know, if one, like I said, doesn't give you a good answer, one does, that sort of a thing, okay? So, that's a Google Assistant, and I don't want to kill too much time with that because I do want to take a few minutes to talk about the other one, which is Google Photos. And again, if you haven't downloaded it yet and you have an iPhone, it's very much worth it. It is totally free. And it has a very, very important um, feature, function, that I think you're going to appreciate. And that is, for those of us who use our iPhones to take a lot of pictures and videos, and who doesn't, you know, if you aren't, uh, if you have just the regular phone, you can quickly run out of space. You know, you'll be going to shoot a video or take a photo, and you get that pop-up message that says, oh, you're out of storage space. Would you like to buy more? And I got nothing against Apple making a few dollars on the side, <laughs> as if, you know, all the money they make isn't enough. You know, you can always buy more storage space, but you don't have to, especially if you're using your phone or your iPad for taking a lot of photos and videos. Get the Google Photos app, all right? And you'll notice, by the way, it's kind of the little colored pinwheel. Gosh, it looks... Let's find the photo. It looks so much like the Apple one. Look, there's the Apple one that's the colored pinwheel. And then you go back to Google and it's like, it's a also, wow, who'd have thunk it, right? But when you open it, what it does, all right, it keeps all your photos, right, obviously. Right? But here's the important thing that it does. And that is, if you choose to, if you tell it to, it will automatically upload photos from your phone to your Google account. Now, I should say that this is, this is assuming that you have a Google account, right? With Google Assistant and with Google, the regular Google search, it doesn't matter. You can use them no matter what. If you're going to use Google Photos, you need to have a Google account, which means you have a Gmail address. And lots and lots, I'm going to guess most people have a Gmail address these days. Yeah, you might have an older Yahoo address or, you know, an AOL address from last century. It's worth getting a Gmail address. If only for this one feature, it's worth having it. It costs you nothing. Go sign up at gmail.com. So what will happen is, right, if I have hundreds and hundreds of photos on my phone and I add the Google uh, uh, Photo app, right, eventually, not eventually, it will <laughs> automatically, there it is. I'll, I'll, here, let me show you what I did. See my photo up there in the far upper right corner, right? And it's, I don't know if you can, you can barely see it, but if I, if I look at close here, it's actually kind of going around with the dots there around it. It's kind of doing something. It shows that it's working on something. And if I tap on that, it will show me that it is backing up 470. And look at it, it's counting 470, 469. It's counting the photos that it's backing up from this device. Okay. Meaning my phone, this is the device. And here's the cool thing. When it gets them all backed up from my phone, it's going to offer to take them off of the phone itself, off of the storage on the phone, on the iPhone. So it frees up that space so you can take more photos <laughs> and videos, okay? And don't worry, they're all going to be out there on your Google Photo account. It's another part of the Google suite of services that they have, you know, Google Drive and Docs and all that stuff. And Photos is one of them. And here's the beauty of it. With Google Photos, as long as you're just uploading the regular photo, you know, you're not doing anything super high def or anything like that, photos and videos will be uploaded and stored no matter how many you have. 
thousands, thousands, thousands of photos will all be uploaded to your Google Photos and it doesn't, there's no storage requirement. It's, it's not, you're, you're never going to hear, oh, you're out of storage. It's just, it just does it automatically and for free and it's awesome. And then if you need to, like if you come back to any of these photos here and you need to, you know, get a copy of it or look at it or whatever, I don't know, let's, uh, oh, here's, I like my uh, Captain Kirk here, you know, I don't believe in no-win scenarios, all right? If you need it, but first of all, rewind, let me back up two seconds. All of the photos that I'm seeing here are not on this phone. They're not stored on my phone, okay? They're stored in my Google Photos account, online, in the cloud, not taking up space on my phone, right? And I can get to them by any connected device. So if I'm at home in front of my computer, I go to my Google Photos account, I can see them all, I can download them, I can edit them, I can play with them. That's a whole other video for a whole other day, right? But if I wanted to, right, I can open up a photo here, right, and see the three spots up in the upper right corner up there? tap on those three dots, one of the available options is download, which will bring it down and put it back on the phone. If I wanted to use it for something or send it to, well, I, don't know, I could send it to somebody without downloading it. Maybe edit it or play with it or post it to a social media account or something like that, right? So you can download it if you have to, but if you don't have to, they're all out there in the cloud being stored and not taking up vital space on your phone. All right, Whew. three big Google app. Well, one really big Google app and two really helpful ones as well. So let's uh, call it a day on that, shall we? All right, iPhone A to Z. Today is G for Google. It's, uh, we cheated a little, I admit it. We cheated a little, I get it. All right, if you haven't done so yet, let me invite you over to uh, sign up for our newsletter. It's at BillSkladowski.com. There's the email address uh, or the uh, web address right beneath. Uh, sign up for the newsletter. It's right on the home page. Just put in your email. Every week, uh, usually on a Sunday, you will get our e weekly recap email, which will have links to the two videos that were put out this past week, the What's New Wednesday video and the iPhone Friday video, and also the free handout that comes with the iPhone Friday video. So it tells you exactly how to do what it is that we did on the iPhone Friday video. Not going to be a lot to talk about with the Google stuff this week, but don't worry, we'll still have some sort of a good handout for you there. Costs you nothing, and you only get one email a week, so it's all good. Sign up for that at BillSklodowski.com, and we will see you for that. All right, it's going to do it for this weekend, or this week, I should say. Have yourself a great weekend. Stay safe out there. And if you have any questions, or if you have a suggestion, or, you know, if you think of something that it's like, gee, I wonder how to do this feel free to leave it in a comment, either here if you're watching live on Facebook or if you're watching it on the blog or on YouTube, wherever you see it, I read and respond to all the comments and questions personally, so feel free to uh, drop in and, you know, leave your question. I appreciate it. If this is helpful to you or to uh, you think it might be helpful to friends, feel free to share it as well on your social media outlets. We very much appreciate that. Helps us grow our tribe of people and iPhone friends out there. Uh, that's going to do it. Have yourself a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Take care.